This is 7 News High School Red Zone. Hi everybody and welcome in week number four in the high school red zone. Thanks for coming on over from channel seven or if you're just joining us, we've got a whole bunch of action over the next half hour for you. Some really impressive plays to show you tonight. Some surprising scores here and there. Let's start out with a backyard battle and I would put this game in the surprise column the way it played out for Greer and Burns. The Rebels were trying to extend a long winning streak in their home field against their arch rivals. Oh, a couple of school districts that go right up against each other. Todd Summers was there and has the recap. Burns playing host to rival Greer midway through the first quarter. Colby Shaw dumps it off to Tyleek Dawkins, who makes an impressive move and scores from 10 yards out. Burns up 7-0. Second quarter, Josh Runyon throws it up, and Chase Bird makes a leaping grab on the sideline for a 32-yard gain, but the Jackets cannot score on the drive. However, with 12 seconds to play in the first half, Runyon airs it out, and Bird runs under it for a 57-yard touchdown. Greer and Burns are tied at seven at the break. Midway through the third quarter, Colby Shaw has some time, throws across the middle to Kai Cook, and Kai can fly. As he goes 72 yards for the touchdown, Rebels back on top, 14 to seven. Two minutes later, running back RJ Livingston goes straight ahead for the five yard touchdown. Burns up 21 to seven. Late third quarter, Josh Runyon airs it out once again, and Brock Diggins makes the grab for a 46 yard gain. Two plays later, Runyon throws to the front pylon, and Brock Diggins makes the nice catch for a 23 yard TD. Yellow Jackets cut the Rebels' lead to 21 14. Just under six minutes to play, Greer is backed up deep in its own territory. Josh Runyon can't handle the snap, and Will Roper makes the tackle for the safety, burns up 23 to 14. Closing seconds of the game, Rashard Wright comes up with the interception to seal the deal as Burns secures its 15th straight win over Greer. Final score, 23 to 14. Ugly win, but a win's a win. We'll celebrate it whether it's one point or whether it's 23 to 14. Just proud of how we finished in the second half. We were in a dogfight. Hats off to a great Greer team. They came ready to play. We not so much, but we woke up and, and found a way to win. And the win is career victory number 100 for coach Reggie Shaw. And Duncan, Todd Summers for the high school red zone. So congrats to him. He's probably happier with a 4-0 start. Mallard Creek and Gaffney tribe down late. Four minutes to go, fourth quarter. They trail by 14. Grayson Loftus, Jaden McDowell, and Gaffney within seven. Ensuing kickoff. You got to try to get the ball back. And the Indians do playing the Charlotte School Mallard Creek for the third time in the series. Loftus and crew though on a fourth and 10 and he's sacked and Gaffney falls to one and two. Second straight week they have a game decided by seven points this time on the bad side 20 to 13. Hillcrest Rams started 4-0 last season. Uh, two seasons ago, trying to start 4-0 for the second time in three years against Boiling Springs, which is looking for back-to-back -back wins after a victory last week. Lincoln Husky is going to be a good quarterback for Matt Reel. Extended a drive with that play. It eventually stalled. Bennett Judy to Jalen Neal for the Rams. And Logan Coldren makes it 7-0 Hillcrest. And Hillcrest ties up the all-time series at 12 apiece. Their win last year snapped a six-game skid. They roll. Tonight, 48-0. Spartanburg going to the Atlanta area for a second time in their first four games and falling again this time to national power Grayson, which has produced all those great players, many for Clemson over the years, 51-24. The Man Patriots, I think a mild surprise, 3-0 for the first time in over a decade. They were trying to get to 4-0 for the first time since 1996 and a night when easily honored its state championship team and also a girls basketball champion from the early 70s. Ethan Anderson for Man picked off by Landon Santana. He was playing some sweet music on that play. Then Ethan Alexander, there were Ethans everywhere in the third quarter, gives easily a six nothing lead after they were scoreless in the first half. Then Ethan Anderson for man to Michael McClellan and Anderson to Trip O'Neill. Not the guy, uh, anyway, I was gonna make a congressional joke, but so that made it a seven to six game man. Fourth quarter, little trick play, Anderson to Toby Cates, they call him CJ. He's junior and his family gets it into the end zone, but easily rallies. What a great win for Jordan Dura. And they deny man the 4-0 start. 21-14, easily the win at home. T.L. Hanna tried to bounce back after a loss in its rivalry game a week ago. They visited Wren. And Vashawn Burton give it to him close to the end zone. And in he goes. Three-yard touchdown. 23-21 Hanna, third quarter. This is a tight game down the stretch. Freshman quarterback Mason Holesclaw for Wren. 50 yards to Caden Hutto. 
and a 28-23 lead for Wren. But on the ensuing kickoff, this still in the third quarter, Jalen Bowles off the bobble, 95 yards on the run back for Hannah. 31-28 Jackets, and they push on to the victory. They tie that all-time series at 13 apiece as they win it by 10 at Wren, which falls to 0 and 3. Greenville, an 0 and 3 team, but maybe the best on the planet, losing to some tough customers in the early going, taking out their frustrations on the road in Malden tonight. Look at the catch by Mazio Bennett, major prospect, just a junior on the pass from Bryson Drummond. Then later on, little connection right there. And Aaron Bowens gets into the end zone for Malden, but in the end, Greenville had their number. They roll to the victory. 70 to seven is the final score. Greenville gets a first win of the year, a resounding win. Their fifth in the all-time series against the Mavs against just one loss. When we come back, so much more going on, including the new number one team in Run A, making the trek out to Oconee County. Could the St. Joe's Knights pull it off against a fellow 3-0 Seneca? We'll show you that action and a whole lot more coming up.